Dr. Aaron Tracy is here with me now giving a very important talk on a topic that I think is growing in this country, but so few people really understand how critical it is right now. I think that's true. I think it's an international problem, but it's very much a problem in our own, in our own country as well, as you said. It's about 20 million people around the world are indentured or in slavery, essentially, and about 70% of them are women or girls, with a very significant number trafficked into the United States every year, estimates between 14 and a half thousand to 17,500 women or girls trafficked into this country every year. And I know part of what you're doing is a little bit of myth busting because I think so many people feel like it's not happening to our girls, it's not happening in this country the way it is in other places, but it is. That's true, and our runaways and teens in our country that are struggling with different issues and leave home, about a third of them are in danger of being lured into sexual prostitution within 48 hours of going missing. So this is very much a very real issue affecting our own communities. So. I imagine that this is a bit of a call to action. What would you like physicians to do? How can they get involved? How can they affect some change here? I want physicians to be aware of it, that this is really modern day slavery, unfortunately exists, and to feel empowered to actually start the conversation with patients and to look for red flags and to realize what resources there are for them once they identify patients. What are those red flags and maybe some of the questions that the physicians should try to broach with their patients? I mean, anytime there's someone who appears nervous or afraid to communicate, if there's someone else they're trying to answer for them, if they don't have their, if they're not clear as to where they are, why they're there, if they don't have any identifying documents with them, and if they just have different, obviously, injuries in different stages of healing. One of the sort of telltale signs sometimes is tattoos. In the old days, in the modern, the plantations and slavery days of American time, people were branded. Now they actually have tattoos. So asking questions about particular tattoos often in the back where they can be hidden. And obviously anybody with physical injuries or sign of sexual abuse should raise concern. And at times I imagine that that may take a number of times because people are not willing to speak out the first time, but don't give up, I think right. is the real message right. here. I think the problem is that these victims or survivors are not really granted access to providers. So they often can't come in or not allowed to seek help until they're in labor or they're bleeding or they're having pain. They're not getting routine health care. So I think unlike other patients that we may develop a relationship over time, we really might only have one opportunity to meet with them. So the emergency rooms, the labor wings, pediatric office, obstetrician's offices, midwife offices, these are prime opportunities to try to screen. There is so much information that you got in in as much as you could in the time frame. But is there a place that people can go to get more information? Because really, when you read about these statistics, they pull you over. It's, right. it's shocking, and it really is, I think, a, a way that people want to get involved when they read yes. more. I think everyone should have a phone number with them in their office at the National Human Trafficking Resource Center or the Polaris Project. We are not social workers, we're not law enforcement, but we are people that potentially interact with these women and victims and survivors. And so I would encourage people to remember one statistic that really terrifies me is 50% of women or girls in one study that were survivors of trafficking did come in for health care during their captivity. So we really have an opportunity to try to help these women and help these girls. And the Players Project has really identified aspects across the country, resources people can use to get in touch with social services, law enforcement. So we just can start the conversation and then really get them plugged into people that can really help. And point these girls in the right direction where they might finally get out of, of this yes. prison. Yes, absolutely. I think it's a moral imperative. I think this is really a great evil being perpetuated and we have the opportunity to help. Thank you so much. I think this is so important, Dr. Tracy. I appreciate your efforts. Thank you so much for taking the time.